everyone, it's Dali here from Dali Art. Um, a couple of you have asked if I would do some fabric bags using rice paper. So these are some examples me and my sister have made. So this one is using butterfly kisses. Um, so that you can see that um, with this, you've got a really beautiful um, background created with one of the Dali Art stencils and using the fabric mist from uh, Pentart and then the, the rice paper. So I'm actually going to be showing you using this rice paper on a bigger bag and the step-by-step -step guide for that. I've got a couple of other examples. We've got also um, the Wild and Free Lady, which is absolutely beautiful again um, on a bigger bag. I mean, these bags are lovely. We do sell these kits, so if you're interested. Um, and then I've got another one, which is the other third lady in the range, which is Florana. So you can just see that there's quite a lot there um, that you can play with, add to. If you're somebody who wants to do embroidery over the top, you can do so. If you want to add other fabric um, materials, then you can do. Right, so that's just three of those that I'm showing you today. I've got lots more, um, but I wanted to just show you how to do this bag today. Let me just move those out of the way. So the first thing is, is you need to get a cotton bag. Um, I'm using this large one. Uh, make sure that it's reasonably flat. Just move my jumper out of the way. Reasonably flat. Um, and you can iron it, obviously, to flatten it out. Now, the most important thing is, is I find that to get a really smooth finish, and a couple of you have asked how do you get the rice paper so smooth, is basically to put inside a piece of cardboard or even like a cereal box, anything that you've got that's a little bit stiffer than paper or even 300 GSM cardstock, but make sure it covers the inside of your entire bag. And then on top of that, I've put a little uh, plastic sheet. You could put your craft mat in here. You could put um, anything that's going to, um, like a greaseproof paper, just so that when you spray or you're adding the textile medium, it's not going to actually stick to the other side of the bag. So this is what, so that's your sort of prep. That's the, the amount of prep I'm gonna do for this, this element. All right, now the next thing is, is having a look. I've decided out of the three beautiful papers, which we do sell as individuals, and we have them as, uh, for, as a set of three. So um, you can just have a look at those, yep. So I'm gonna actually do butterfly kisses. Now rice paper, can be used on lots and lots of different um, mediums, on fabric, on glass, on uh, MDF. So really, it's the world's your oyster. In fact, I'm going to ask Paul if he could pass me the book from behind, which is a journal book with the butterfly kisses, which again is a really beautiful way to use this rice paper. So as you can see, um, this is the um, journal which is using the rice paper butterfly kisses. Um, again, really beautiful, and that's one of the other black and white rice papers we do. So this is actually the Craft Along Journal Kit, um, which I know so many of you already purchased. Um, so this is a really beautiful kit to work with. You get the notepad, the rice papers, and, all, and the mediums to do this. Okay, so moving on, let's start with this. So the rice papers will be packed in a, 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 a plastic bag. Again, it's something I always keep by my side. Um, because they are very, very useful. Right, now the best way to do this for me, I find is, is I look at the image um, and see, I'm really sorry about the noise, obviously it's a very, very windy day out there and we've got a uh, skylight above us that um, obviously the rain is pouring over. So, got this beautiful image. Now, it's important that we don't, you can just stick this on, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's really important if you actually and feather the edges. Now I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to use my sheet underneath because I don't want my bag to get wet. Take your water and take a clean brush. So let's just do that. So it's just clean water. And I sort of want to just feather the, the edges. So this will help us tear the paper. I do want to keep these um, beautiful colours that are bleeding from the butterflies as well. So just a bit wet. If you find you're struggling or you find that you find this a little bit difficult to do, just add more water. You can also take a pair of scissors um, to get you started. So then use your two thumbs, holding one down and one pulling, one down and one pulling, and just go around where you've done that. Now rice paper has these what I call little slugs of fibre, 
Um, and when you've got those, what happens is um, you may get some resistance. And if you're finding it difficult, just take a small pair of scissors and just cut those away. And there's no rights and wrongs. So all we're doing is just going around this, very, very easy to tear once you've got it. Now a few people have asked, can I use napkins? Napkins are not as forgiving. Um, they will not adhere to fabric in a, in a very thin layer. Um, sort of more, these are more translucent um, and very, very easy to work with. And like I say, you can use them on so many different mediums. So here we go. So I've gone all the way around. And you can keep these little scraps. You can stamp onto them, use them for other projects. So let me just put those down. So now we've got this really nice image. Now if you still feel that it's a little bit too um, harsh or anything, like I don't, I think the, the, the part at the, the bottom should be a little bit, in my opinion, should be a little bit um, more rugged. So I'm going to trim to that. I'm going to dip lower. I think my water level is a bit lower there. And again, just go, go in and just tear away um, bits of it. So it's all about, you know, you don't always want it to be perfect. Okay, so that's going to be my image sort of sitting in the middle. Now, the other thing you can do is, is use um, any of the Deli Art stencils or any of the other stencils that you may have. Um, and we're going to just position these beautiful sort of white daisies in the background. Um, so what I'm going to first do is, I'm going to take um, a brush and I'm just going to um, just get a little piece of kitchen roll, just reach across. Um, and what I'm going to do is, I'm, I've, got, oops, I've got three sprays here. These are our fabric medium sprays. We do these in over sort of, I don't know, about, probably about 12 to 15 colours. So I've probably got my fingers right in the way of them. So let me just put them down there. So these are the fabric misters. These are, once the heat set, are waterproof. So these are absolutely brilliant. It doesn't mean to say that you cannot use these in your mixed media projects as well. So it's really up to yourselves how you want to use them. And what I want to do is, is I'm going to use a little bit of them and I'm just going to put them on the side of my mat. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just do a little bit. Just there. Don't worry, I've got a little bit on there. That's not a problem. Um, and a little bit more. Of that color so I'm using the red blue and yellow so very primary colors actually so I sort of mix those and you get a green and you'll also get a little purple as well so what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to take these in and I'm going to start to build onto the colors that I've already got what this will do is it will just break down it'll just make it look a little bit more interesting and um, so it has a little colour on it and again sort of makes it more like a, a watercolour um, than, than it is and there's no rights and wrongs if you don't want to do this you don't have to it's just that I'm doing it because I think it's, it's a nice way to add the colours that you're going to be using in the background in the foreground so, so you're making a purple there you're making a green there so it's a really, really nice way to do it. And again, you know, you could use a smaller brush. I don't, I don't want it to be perfect. That's very much my style. Um, but if you wanted it to be perfect, then obviously use you know, a smaller brush or a different brush. So that's all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of that color. If you feel it's smudged in too much for you, then just go, go in another little space and just put a little bit of colour. The colours are so rich, so just be aware of that, because the colours are so rich. Um, so, you know, you might want to go in and just do a little bit, not too much, because we don't want them to look perfect either. You know, maybe we'll add a little bit up to this side as well, a few here. And, you know, we've got all the 3D pens you can add. There's just so much you can do. Uh, the other thing I want to do is, and this is very new, as you know, work out, is I just want to do her little, a little bit of her lips as well into the red. Too much, but just enough to give her a little bit of colour, a little bit of highlighting. And again, you can use a much, much smaller brush. Um, but I quite like this, 
because it gives me, it doesn't, it means that I don't have to put it into detail, but it gives me a really nice sort of feathered look. So there we go. So that's that bit. So just rinse my brush out. Dried off a bit. And then maybe a little bit of the blue to give her the bluey eyes as well. Not too much, but just enough to, to pick it up. And just drop a little bit into there. So I'm being really careful because I don't want to obviously flood flood the eyes um, but I want to give them and again you know you can continue to add as much detail as you like you know you might want to do a bit of her hair you might want to do some of these stripes you know add to them it's all about what you want to create so you know so it doesn't matter what you're doing a little bit of spraying going on anyway and I'm just going to blend that in because I don't want it to be the white harsh lines. Um, she's got a bit of blue in her hair. It's very dally. And if Pip was here, she'd keep it really clean and really all together. But obviously, I'm not like that. I'm very naughty. So, so we've got a little bit of going on there. So. Just, you know, don't don't overthink it. If you want to keep it very clean, keep it clean. Um, but don't overthink it. So, you know, I've used all what I had, and that's really important for me as well, because we don't want to waste anything. Yeah. And like I say, we can go in and we can do little bits, you know, everywhere, so it's not a problem. Right, so once you've got your image, you can obviously got your image that you've got there. Now, this is quite important. Um, we do three um, products for rice paper. One we do is for textiles, purely for textiles, so that you can actually um, use it as a varnish and a glue. It's really important to use the textile one because then it is washable. Um, you'll follow the instructions on the back of the pot, which means that you just I'm going to show you how to do it but obviously heat set it afterwards now the other one we do is the ceramic one which is for ceramics and, and um, non-porous products um, substrates and then we do a matte medium which also is for mdf and posters so that's all fine this is dry and it's you know it's lovely um, and you know what i'm going to actually do some stitching on this and um, show you that as a, and uh, post it for you at a later stage so because i actually think this is going to be really nice so the next step is, is now look at where you want to position all of this. So you know that you're going to have your stencil there. It's very, very important that you do not um, put a dark colour behind your rice paper because what will happen if you put a dark colour, um, and I'll show you what, is that she'll become quite dark. So I don't know if you can see that. And that's okay if you want that sort of darker colour. If you want it to be lighter and a bit more popped, then she needs to be on a whiter colour. And again, you can do parts of her darker and parts of her whiter. And that, that could be your shading if you, if, if you want to do that. Now I've got a bit of stencil paste um, that I will go out and just like pull to pass it over to me. It's also a really nice way to add a few touches because we do this in, again in a lot of colours. Now stencil paste is also machine washable which is the other reason for using it. So all I'm doing is I'm using a palette knife to, to sort of add a little bit of um, um, little, little, little spots. And you can even use your fingers like I do. And what this will do is it will just add more, more detail really to your project, you know. And I'm not doing this at all. Like, you know, you know me, if I did everything tidy and and in, in, in keeping, it would be really boring for me. So, you know, you could use a cocktail stick. Uh, see, now I would really like to add some, maybe hand sew some beads onto this. Um, and again, you can make these bags into cushions, and I'll show you that at the end as well, how to do that. Because not everybody is a sewer. Um, and so these are actually very good, because they're very, very versatile to make little cushions out of as well. So all I've done is I'm just taking a little bit of gold to each of the centres of my little butterflies. Uh, nothing, nothing too too special, but it just adds a little bit more 3D dimension to your project. 
I know I've got one on my lips as well though because it's going to be like a sparkly lipstick there we go so we've got a little bit of um, that going on there so again you can add as much detail or as little detail as you like and it's lovely with the stencil paste because it means that you can actually um, do quite well and there's two ways of doing this you can either add your rice paper and then build your stencil over the top or you can do your stencil underneath and then do that on top. It really is up to you yourself. Personally, I think it's better to do the stencil first because then you, you could cover your image with a piece of paper or even use your plastic again, which I have here, and then you could stencil. So I could, if I wanted to stick the image down first and then stencil, um, and then that what will happen is, is you won't stencil where the image is. However, what I find with that is, is that it's, it's too regimented and it looks like you've stuck the stencil over the top of the rice paper whereas doing it the way I'm going to do it and adding this as a touch you can get a much more blended effect so let's get started with the um, the actual um, stencil itself so I'm just going to I'm going to keep it down from the edge on this case and all I'm going to do is take the three that I've got here the three beautiful colors I've chosen on this mm -hmm. paper we have so many beautiful We've got purples, we've got everything. Um, so, so first thing I need to show you is, is we have this, um, what we call the uh, collage spray. Um, and this is um, to reposition stencils. And I find this really, really useful. And I think it's nearly empty now. I find it extremely useful to just spray the back of my stencils, especially on fabric. And this will give you a much more controlled look. Spray it away from you. We do sell this as well. And then just give it a little little uh, waft that you've got that and all we're doing is we're going to just stick this down and what this will give me is a much better hold on the fabric because as you know fabric is uh, very movable and it's very unpredictable not like some of the other mediums we use so just make sure you've got it stuck down really really well so now the next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to start spraying now be careful obviously you don't want to mu muddy the colours it's easy to muddy the colours. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go and just do some yellow first. And don't worry if you go outside your stencil or, you, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world. Now, the other thing we can do is we can add a little bit of colour. Ooh, there we go. So, again, and if you want to protect your bag even more, just put some, put the plastic sheet in and protect that even more. So... So now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to use my spatula and I'm going to go through and just use that colour. Now I'm going to ask Paul if he can pass me a sheet of cardboard. So it should be some over in the corner over there or any, any piece of paper really, white paper. Because this is quite important because you don't want to waste all of this. Um, maybe a little bit thicker than that please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe in the box and below or something maybe. So we're just going to, I'm just doing it like this because I quite like this effect. Now you don't need to do this like this. So, um, and I should have got the paper ready, I think. <laughs> so I've probably got some over here somewhere. So, um, and I'm going to add a little bit. Thank you. Sorry about that, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of the, the, the blue as well. So not too much because the blue is actually quite strong as well. But all the colours are really strong. So, and these will also match our, now this is a slightly different way to some people would do it. But I quite like this because you're, you're going to get some deeper bits, you're going to get some lighter bits. Now, the reason I asked for the paper is I'm going to pick all that ink up because I don't want it to be just wasted. So... And you know, you could use this as the card, make a card from this, a tag if you're gifting this bag. Or just use it for your die cutting. Um, so this is one of the way of cleaning your stencil as well. I'm not sure how this is going to pick up on this card stock, but we'll give it a go. There we go. So let's just pick that up. So it gives you a really beautiful image there. Okay. So... Now what we can do is we can lift this slowly and because it's a spray it could be thinner it could be thicker i don't know if you can see that 
um, so that's come through really really nicely I'm just going to wipe the back of my stencil because you will get a little bit of bleed because you have to remember that you're putting sprays through it not stencil paste but you're putting sprays and what you could do you could have left that there and you could have put some stencil paste through just the, 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 the daisy heads and um, so there's lots of different ways so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take another I'm actually going to off center this now I'm going to sort of pick it up there because I quite like the idea it's not going to be flat down now just be careful when you do that because obviously your stencil is not now totally flat so it doesn't matter it's not going to do it any harm or anything like that I'm just picking the accents I've got so we're not getting that color spreading but it does give you this beautiful color um, of products so this is one way of doing one way of doing this so let's just press that down so now I'm thinking let me put a bit more yellow and just red into this one because I've got quite a lot of blue in the other one oh and that way we've got a little contrast going on now I think I've done that pretty good and it is a bit messy but it's really good it's not that messy and then again let's just flood a little bit of this in doesn't matter if you don't if you find that you're with the palette knife you you're not getting the same movement as you want you can always take like a um a, a baby wipe or a piece of tissue and just go in because what that will do is it'll just absorb it and it'll make you lift it so i'm quite happy with you know i don't need all the detail i'm just i, I don't need it to be perfect um but if you're looking for something that you want to be more perfect then you and again lift this and you've got a slightly different colour combination going on there so now I'm going to just go back and have a look at my uh, rice paper because what I don't want to do is, is find that I've, I've over overdone it or I've not done it enough so I think she um, sort of wanted to sit sort of here so I think another bit here would be um, they're quite nice so on this bit what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to start a little bit off again Let's see if I can get a little bit of so I'm going to start a little bit off again here let's move this up again press it down if you find it's getting a little bit less tacky because it is just repositionable spray then all you need to do is make sure you just spray a little bit more repositionable again so what I want to do with this one is I want to put a little bit of red in not too much there we go a little bit of yellow I like the yellow because the brightness is lovely and I'm going to bring back the blue in this one so that it sort of matches the one at the top so we can just see there we go my blue is very 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 rich so just be aware of that so that if your certain colors are always in anything are going to be very very rich so all we're doing here is basically just doing exactly what we've been doing so let's push some of that color out and let's put some of that color in and this way again you're cleaning your stencil but you're also getting these beautiful beautiful effects so there we go so that's the the other corner done very similar to the top bit uh, and again put your paper back your rice paper down and have a look where you are with this yeah so I'm going to move this slightly over and the reason for that is, is I want to go back in again when I've, when I've done this with a little bit more of the stencil so I'm going to spray this a little bit because I've because I've used it several times and I've wiped it with a baby wipe I would like the tackiness to be a bit stronger so wipe the back of your stencil as well because what you're doing is, is you're going to take transpose that colour onto your back. Obviously with a paste this one you would have a different effect altogether. So I'm just going to spray a little bit more. I don't think I've got any in here left now, but that's okay. I think I've got enough to see us through for this project. I've been using it for so long. Give it a wash. And again, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of it here again, sort of centre it, stick it down, and we're going to go with the red and the yellow this time, just to 
to make it matchy matchy on the other side, which is very rare to do. She's going to give this a go, see if she can stick to it. I doubt if she can, but we'll give it a go. So again, we're just taking that in. I'm using just a little bit of baby wipe and just splodging that down. And again, you know, you can lift this colour, you can push it through. I quite like, you know, I love the fact that you can make, you know, a background just by doing that. I mean, just look at that. I mean, just imagine cutting that now with your circular die. Um, that would be just so beautiful. So, nothing is wasted in the craft room, and I'll even be keeping this. Look at that, it's like a tie dye. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, so let me lift this back up again. So, we've got something very similar. Now, we're going to do the top bit. Again, just wipe the underneath just in case. You've got a little bit of um, seepage from the spray. The sprays are beautiful, by the way. They are so, so lovely. Right, so I'm going to put that just, I think, here. There we go. Press it down. Again, I'm going to go with the yellow. And you're just pressing it. I haven't stuck this bit down very well this time. You're going to go with a little bit of red. Oops. And you're going to go with a little bit of blue. Now remember the blue is much richer than the jelly blue. Don't worry if it goes over or anything, it doesn't matter. So, you know, if you've got bits that you've missed, pick up the big blobs and put it back in again. And you can always put your stencil back down again if you're not happy. So it doesn't have to be anything like you have to worry about. Okay, so that's that one. And then one last one at the bottom. So that's, that's much more faded than the original one we did. And then we're going to do a little bit of a crossover here like we did at the bottom over there. So, now, I put a bit more on this one because we didn't do as much as we did on the original one. But that's all, that's what it's all about. You know, it's all about practice. It's all about, oops, I think I've uh, blocked my finger over it, uh, which I'm quite good at doing. So again, let's put a bit of blue into this to, to lighten it up a bit. And if there's anything that you need to go back into and do, well, you can always go back in and do that. That's not a problem. You know, again, I'm sort of smudging these inks in. All the stencils are white, you know, it's all water-based initially before it gets heated. So you can actually do do that. There we go. So we've now done like a background already. And really, we do have to obviously let it dry. But we can, oops, my butterflies want to fly. So now we've got something like this. So what I want to do next is, before I do any more stenciling, let me have it here. Okay. All I want to do is now is to make sure on my textile medium now this is where a lot of people find that uh, it doesn't quite work the way they thought it would work um, doesn't as flat now uh, what you need to remember is wherever you're going to lay your rice paper and this is for glass this goes for MDF is make sure you put a really good coat and I mean a really good coat of the decoupage medium because if you don't your paper will lift and that's not what we want paper coming through there. Um, so and if you find that it is lifting it's because you've not put enough down in the first place so what I what I tend to do is, is I start off like this then I start to put the paper down and then I sort of push outwards so that if you can see if there's anything, so I'm doing this. And that's really, really important because if you don't do that, then if you've got anything left, that will lift and you will get air bubbles underneath, which you will not be able to fix afterwards very easily. Okay, so I've sort of stuck the main image and I'm pressing quite hard because that's the good thing about rice paper, it is extremely, extremely forgiving. 
Right, so what I want to do now is I want to go back and do the sides because I want to make sure. And if you're really worried, you can actually put it on straight onto your rice paper as well, just so that you know that you've got a good coverage there. Now, rice paper is very, very, very forgiving. You could not do that with a napkin. And again, push outwards, outwards. Now, be careful, like I've just done. If you've got any, if you've got anything on your brush, then that will. Um, and sorry, from the, from the edges, you've, because you've not let it dry, because we haven't actually dried it, will get picked up. Now, that's very important that you have a very uh, colour that has already been dried. But if it hasn't, because this is a varnish, you can go back in before ironing it and take off any anything that's newly been put down and it hasn't dried yet. So that's the good thing as well. So I'm just going to see like where I've got the flowers here. They're still wet. So, because it's fabric, it will take a little bit of time. But I quite like that because it means that I'm actually adding some of those colours, I'm blending it in. It's not, I don't want it to be perfect because it'll look like otherwise I've stuck something down. And again, look, I've got quite a lot here um, that still needs. I've got another part here, but this was my last of this bit. And I've got another one here that I can use. So here we go. So I think I'm just using the ends of what I've got left because we, you know what it's like. It shows we have so many pots open, and then, and I like to finish everything. And there we go. So that's good. And then now I've got this part here, which is still got some in. And we're going to use that as well. So you know, make sure you put a good, good, good amount down. You know, make sure your flowers are dry. But I don't want to, you know, spend all all my time just. Showing the drying because I don't want that to be the case. Um, we also have 3D pens, which would be really nice added to the flowers, which I'll add to the end as well. So all I'm doing now is I'm just blending it out. Now, anywhere you feel you need to add more, like I think this isn't sticking at the top because I haven't got anything at the top. And you can see very quickly that you don't have anything at the top. And then again, push really hard. Make sure you've got a good strong brush in your hands. And push that out and don't worry about this color don't worry because that's all adding to the detail if you don't want that to happen and you want it to be really perfect then just dry the inks underneath and I quite like it because it's like a watercolor wash now again I can tell from here that there's not enough textile medium down and if there isn't enough it will lift and yes you can lift it off and go back in again but you can do this then it's brilliant that you can get it right you don't use that much just um just enough to get a good coating um and again push outwards push outwards push outwards and this way you shouldn't be getting any bubbles you shouldn't be getting any lift you shouldn't be getting any bubbles at all so i'm going to go back in again go over it this also protects your bag as well because there's a varnish and a glue. Always make sure that the edges are really sealed well, because it's the edges which will lift mainly. Now you can see, you know, somebody asked me, they were getting, it wasn't flat. Now I think that is very, very flat. I don't know if you can see that, that is extremely flat. It's not even a little bit of a wrinkle in there. So the next thing I want to do is now, is make sure you put your brush into water and the next thing is, is we still want to add a little bit of we still want to add a little bit of detail back in up at the top um, so here look see I can see a little bit still see that doesn't that hasn't stuck so well so this is this is why I'm saying you really do need to check that you have made sure that everything is stuck really well okay so again just take a bit it dries very fast that's the other thing um, and then go back in I will be happier now that I've done that there we go. and because the uh, rice paper is translucent you can still see some of the designs of the flowers coming through so I'm very happy with that now you could heat set that and just make sure it's all heat set um, but I'm just going to go into the next level because I, I'm 
always don't want to be long videos because obviously it's nice to have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same stencil, I'll set it a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit, not too much, just a few flowers at the top. Um, so we're just going to do, because I think it's important that you've got, and you can protect, obviously protect your um, image. I like to pass the paper. So I can protect my little image and anything around it, in fact, if I don't, oops, if I don't want it to go. And I just keep covering it with my finger and this is what happens, I think. So what I'm going to do is take my bit of baby wipe, smudge that in. And so we've got a little bit of coverage here now as well. So that's really, really nice. So I want to keep it so that it's got that. Okay. So I've used a baby wipe so you will get this smudgy feeling. So what I'm going to do is show you how to fix that as well while it's still wet. 